Hello, this is Matt from LeanStacks. Welcome to another unscripted episode in the LeanStacks Technology Instruction Series. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to SSH to your EC2 instance. I have an EC2 instance shown here on my EC2 dashboard, uh, which is running the Amazon Linux operating system. As you can see, the details of this EC2 instance are in the bottom panel uh, of the EC2 instances page. Um, there's a couple of important things to note uh, as it pertains to connecting via SSH to your EC2 instance. The first is this key pair name. Now, the key pair was something that I either created new or I selected an existing key pair uh, when this instance was provisioned. In, in this case, I provisioned the instance. But if you're working for an organization, perhaps someone else provisioned the instance and they created the key pair and, and managed those key pair files. Uh, a key pair file is a, is a public and private key um, which are used to authenticate someone, anyone, to uh, an EC2 instance when that person attempts to connect to it. So it's it's how AWS configures authentication uh, via SSH to an EC2 instance. In this case you can see that I am using a key pair named LeanStacks Demo. Now we're going to come back to that in a few minutes when we issue the actual SSH command. But the key pair name is the name of the also the name of the key pair file which is downloaded um, by the person who provisions the instance. Um, so you will want to, if you do not already have that file, um, it will have a .pem file extension. If you don't already have the uh, key pair file which you need to SSH to uh, your EC2 instance, you'll want to ask around your organization um, and obtain that file first. The second thing that you need to SSH uh, to connect via SSH to an EC2 instance is the public DNS name. Now you can also use the public IP address, but Amazon recommends using the public DNS name. Either will work. So let's get started. To SSH uh, to this EC2 instance, I'm going to open a terminal window and before I minimize my browser, I'm going to go ahead and copy the public DNS name for this instance. Now to make things a little bit more clear uh, for you, I'm going to go ahead and minimize my browser. This is my terminal window. Um, I have already changed directory uh, to the location where my private key file is located. Remember when we were looking at the uh, AWS console we could see on our target EC2 instance that the key pair name was LeanStacks Demo and as you can see here I have that key pair file LeanStacksDemo.pem. One important thing if, if you have this file you need to make sure that the file permissions are read only for the owner group or for the owner portion of the permissions, but for the group and for the everyone else portion of the permissions, um, there needs to be no access rights at all. So if you need to change those permission settings on the file, you use the chmod command, and those permissions expressed numerically are 400. So 4 provides the read access for the owner group and 00 denies any access for the group level uh, permissions and the everyone else level of permissions. Um, so and then you specify the file name and press enter. I'll list the contents of the directory again. As you can see, they are unchanged because I had already set the appropriate file permissions on the uh, key pair file. I'm going to clear my console. Now let's go ahead and issue the SSH command and connect uh, to our EC2 instance. So the SSH command is SSH we use the dash i option to specify a relative or absolute path 
to that private key pair file. Um, the dash I, the I stands for identity, uh, which is just sort of the uh, SSH's alias for that private key pair file. It is an also called an identity file. Since it's in the same directory where uh, my terminal is currently located, I simply have to name the file. Uh, the final portion of the SSH command is where you specify the username on the server, so the server user account, uh, followed by the at symbol, and then that public DNS or public IP address. In our case, we're going to use the public DNS. So because, as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, this server is running Amazon Linux as the operating system. So when the EC2 service provisions a new EC2 instance uh, running Amazon Linux operating system, the user account created, or the username uh, whose account is created by default when that EC2 instance is provisioned is named EC2-user. That's not the same for every operating system, and in just a moment I'll show you uh, a list of the usernames which are created um, for the most common uh, operating systems on EC2 instances. So remember we, we list the username followed by the at symbol and then either the public DNS name or the public IP address. So that's it. Uh, the SSH command followed with the dash I option, um, our private key pair identity file, and then uh, the EC2 user at our public DNS name. I'll press enter to connect. As you can see, um, my SSH on my local machine, I've never connected to this server before. So to be uh, safe, uh, the SSH system is asking me to verify that uh, it's okay to go ahead and connect to this system. I'll type yes and press enter to say yes it is okay. And as you can see the prompt has now changed. We've successfully uh, connected to our server via SSH and now the prompt is letting us know that any commands I issue at this prompt are, are actually being issued to the EC2 instance. A few moments ago I mentioned that the user account or username that is provisioned by default on an EC2 instance uh, is it's different depending upon the operating system of the EC2 instance. So this slide shows the name of the user that is, that is provisioned uh, based upon the operating system used on that EC2 instance. As I mentioned, uh, the instance demonstrated in the episode today is running the Amazon Linux operating system, and that's why we connected with a user named EC2 user. However, if I had an EC2 instance running Ubuntu server, we would have said Ubuntu at and then the public DNS name of that EC2 instance. Red Hat Enterprise Linux uses either root or EC2 user. Fedora uses Fedora or EC2 user. SUSE Linux is root or EC2 user. If you've selected an AMI and provision from the Amazon marketplace, um, or perhaps uh, someone has publicly shared an, an AMI uh, with you, and you've provisioned an EC2 instance from that, um, it's always best to check the documentation of that AMI to see what the name of the uh, default account is on an EC2 instance provisioned from that AMI. That concludes this unscripted Lean Stacks technology instruction episode. To watch more of our episodes, go to the Lean Stacks channel on YouTube. If you've liked this video, please give us a thumbs up by clicking the button below. To find out more, go to LeanStacks.com. See you next time!